We're here with Keith Phillips, President and CEO of Piedmont Lithium. Keith, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me, Craig. Keith, you've hit several milestones since you were last on the show, including your updated scoping study and mineral resource estimate. What does all this mean for investors going forward? Well, the bottom line is over the last year, we've made the project bigger and more valuable. So through a lot of drilling, we've expanded our resource from around 16 million tons to almost 28 million tons, an increase of about 66%. And that translates directly into a longer mine life, with longer mine life, more cash flow, and a higher net present value. So the net present value of our project in our former study was $888 million. Our new NPV is over $1.4 billion. Uh, so the project's bigger and more valuable, more valuable to shareholders like me and to others, and, uh, and more valuable, we think, to potential strategic partners, including customers and, and potential strategic investors. Keith, for our viewers who are unfamiliar with Piedmont, what's the essential value proposition? Why should investors take an interest in the company today? Really two reasons. One, demand for lithium is exploding. Lithium is used in batteries for cars like Tesla's and others. So demand is exploding. And we have the only American conventional lithium project that's being developed. There are no others. So most of the processing is based in China. The raw materials tend to come from South America and Australia. Uh, there are certain other, there's a, a series of other American projects, but ours is the only conventional technology based in North Carolina, uh, the home of the lithium business where Albemarle and Liven had their roots and the business really started you know, 50, 60 years ago. So we have a very large, low cost American business, which we think has real strategic uh, value. Uh, we do trade on NASDAQ, so we're one of only two US listed lithium development companies. Most are listed in other jurisdictions around the world. And uh, we think the stock is cheap uh, today. Lithium equities are trading down. Uh, we've been part of that as well. We think there's huge upside uh, in our stock, and now's a very good time to look at it. Keith, you've touched upon the drivers behind the growing lithium demand. Just how big is the market opportunity? Sure. So last year, electric vehicles represented about 2% of the global car market. Annually, we sell about 100 million vehicles a year around the world. Uh, about 2 million last year were electric. Growth in electric vehicles has been about 60% a year since 2010. That's projected to continue by most observers. People think we'll get to 10% EV penetration by 2025. That's up five times from where we are today. Electric cars are also using bigger batteries with more lithium to have extended range, et cetera and more power. So the demand fundamentals are fantastic. And really at 2025, when you get to 10% EV penetration, it's really a tipping point where it becomes increasingly clear that these cars will be less expensive to buy and operate. I bought a Tesla about nine months ago. It's a fantastic car. I got a Model 3. It was about the same price to buy as an equivalent internal combustion car. It's far less expensive to operate and maintain, to fuel and maintain. Uh, and it's a very high performing car. So I think the more people that are exposed to this opportunity, the more people will buy them. The more people who buy them, the more battery technology will improve, the cheaper the cost will get. And it will soon be at a point where everyone's gonna wanna have an electric car. Now changing directions a bit, let's talk about the recent raise of approximately 14 million US dollars in July. How do you plan to deploy that capital? And will you need to do any additional capital raises over the next 12 to 18 months? Well, I'll answer the second question first. We're very well capitalized. So that was 14 million US. We already had a few million dollars in the bank. So suffice it to say, we have all the money to get you know, well into the next 12 months or so toward a construction decision. Important priorities for us include getting to a feasibility study. So we're now at a scoping study level. Most of the work has been done to a pre-feasibility level, the engineering, the metallurgy, et cetera. Uh, we haven't yet done the infill drilling to declare reserves. Had we done that, we would have declared this a PFS. So we'll be doing that over the next several months. That's that's a you know several million dollar exercise to complete all that work. We think that'll be important confirmation of the quality of the resource and upgraded to reserve. So pursuing a definitive feasibility study, we're spending a lot of time now with different strategic parties, of whether we're talking about offtake parties for spodumene concentrate or lithium hydroxide. Um, and, uh, and also potential strategic investors. These range from battery manufacturers to cathode manufacturers who supply the battery material companies to OEMs, car companies who are interested in controlling their supply. So we have a lot of initiatives that will continue to build our land package, which we think will make the project even bigger and more valuable. And uh, we'll just continue to advance the project. 
Now, Keith, what major milestones can investors look forward to for the remainder of 2019? I think the most important milestone to the rest of this year, number one, would be permitting. So we applied in December for our federal Rule 404 permit. This is a very important permit for us to receive. We think the process has gone very well. It's a very rigorous process, as it should be. The team has done a good job. We're well advanced in that. We hope to receive that permit this year. That's very critical, obviously, to our success and an important catalyst, we think, for investors. We're going to be doing more exploration drilling. So while we increase the resource by 66%, we think there's vast potential in the belt. So we'll have exploration results over the next several months as well, both soil samples on some of the non-core properties that we haven't drilled yet, and also uh, some drill results, uh, making the resource bigger at central and at core. And we may have news on the offtake front with, with customers. We're in contact with dozens, certainly a couple dozen, different parties around the world, again, from car companies to battery companies to cathode companies, who may have an interest in our material. And uh, we look forward to advancing those conversations as well. To recap, Keith, what's the main takeaway for investors? Why should they own your stock today? I think we're at a great point for people who haven't looked at the space to look hard at lithium. Lithium equities traded up to very significant uh, levels a year and a half or so ago. Uh, lithium prices reached all-time highs about a year and a half ago. Prices have fallen meaningfully since then. They're still at you know relatively high levels compared to historic norms. That's really due to the change in the demand equation for lithium with electric vehicles booming. So you have an opportunity where the demand side of the equation is better understood. The supply that came on in 2018 is being digested now. There's very little new supply that's imminent. Uh, so the supply-demand tension, I think, will be very strong. And I think you'll see a run in lithium prices again. I think lithium equities will rebound very, very strongly. So uh, this is an ideal time, uh, we think, to be looking at the space. It's a great story, Keith. Thanks for being on the show today. Hey, Craig, great to be with you. Thank you.